Hey everyone, Tina Novar Club here. Welcome to Writer's Corner. Here I am on YouTube blatantly supporting my Hufflepuff pride because yes, also new haircut. But I'd like to just jump right into it. So this has been on my mind a while and I want to talk about it. As a writer, you will probably eventually offend someone somewhere somehow. How do you handle that? How do you deal? What if you get sucked into a war in the comments? That's what I'd like to talk about today. Before I begin, I won't be talking about any of the example issues I may or may not bring up in this video. I won't be talking about any of my social, political, or economic views. This is about writing. So what do you do if someone gets offended? Run! Panic! Apologize! Do anything! Do something! What you want to do is breathe. Don't panic. This will be okay. Unless you offended Zargoth the Destroyer, this is not the end of the world. So let's take a second and break this down. Why did they get offended? Maybe your characters were too white. Maybe they weren't white enough. Maybe you only had one LGBT character in your story. Basically, maybe it wasn't diverse enough for whoever is criticizing you. Maybe you committed a sinful trope like white knighting or kill all of the gays. Maybe you used one of your characters as a representation for something like obesity or mental illness and you did it in a negative way without offering a contrasting positive view. And we all know we can't use negative representations to teach effective lessons about anything and trying to help in our own ways. That's just not how the world works. Or maybe you covered your story in troll bait before you threw it out there. Good job. Again, breathe. This will be okay. Now, if someone has got offended and has tried to call you out on something before you respond, there are a few things you should clear with yourself first. Make sure you're not emotional, because if you are, then it all turns into a hot mess, and it's not fun for anyone, except for the person who's winning, which won't be you, because you're emotional. You also need to understand where you came from on this and what they called you out on. Did you do something wrong? Are they being overly insensitive or was it from a place of ignorance? And ask yourself, were they right? This is difficult to do, but were they? Understand that most of the time, they're not right. You probably are not a bad person, so you probably did not intend for your story to come across as racist, sexist, or any negative is out there. Do not let them convince you that you are a bad person. However, if you did do it to instigate, antagonize, or get a response, well, you're on your own. If you decide, while in a rational mindset, that you do want to respond, keep that rational mindset going while you're talking to them. Even if they start attacking you, be kind and polite, happy even. Like recently, I was talking with some authors about different publishing formats and they started to question me. Like, really question me. But they didn't mean any harm, I just kept being polite and happy and courteous with them and it all actually got dissolved. And then afterwards I smashed stuff. Just kidding, probably. But seriously, being polite and happy does go a long way. Sometimes you can try and meet them halfway, listen to them, actively listen, and try to understand where they're coming from and that maybe they're not trying to hurt you, just what they think you're representing. And also do your best to explain in a calm, rational way where you're coming from. Maybe most of your characters are white. Most of mine are in the original Legendland where they're giant anthropomorphic animals, but that's because it's in a pseudo-Germany European setting. In Legend Land Tale of the Nameless God, it's this big, sprawling, urban city with a lot more diversity because of location. Still giant anthropomorphic animals, though. So explain politely why you wrote it that way. Maybe you could have wrote it a little bit differently and included a bit more. Ask them for their suggestions and thank them for including you in this and trying to point out what you could do better. We're all trying to constantly improve as writers, or at least we should be. That's how we get better. That's how we have better writing. And that's why people pay us more for our writing because it's better and we put the time into it and we've actively improved ourselves. But don't forget to defend yourself. Your explanation should also double as a defense and be sure to have some facts handy and be prepared in case they want to turn it into a debate. And always seek to minimize how much damage this can do. If their purpose is to try and antagonize you and you realize this and they're not trying to be helpful and help you improve your writing, albeit in a maybe more brusque way, then what you really want to do is just try and defuse it. You know, just slowly shut them down Comment, respond, comment, respond, diffuse it, end it. Unless, of course, it's your own fault. Then you're on your own. Again. But no! How do you avoid the situation in the first place? Realize that somebody, somewhere, somehow, can take issue with anything. You're right, really. They can say you've used your character and trivialized the struggle of those with depression. Somehow. You marginalized a group. 
maybe this is a stereotypical depiction of a drug addict, or you're not Asian, you don't know how to write Asians, or any of the struggles Asians have ever dealt with, ever, so you're not qualified to write this. But it's much more difficult for others and yourself to take these people seriously whenever you put a lot of effort into your story, whenever it is diverse, whenever it's well-rounded, whenever it's amazing. It's easy to do, and it's realistic. Now, does this mean one of your white characters who is a pirate can't save a plantation of Indian people from colonial rule? No. But it does mean that this same pirate should probably be saved by one of the people that they rescued. And that's just good storytelling, cause and effect, showing how the world works and how your story and characters are interconnected. I wonder if I can do that in this way. But like, there's this great list about skin color descriptions, and I really like it. Because there's only so many ways you can describe a character's skin, even if most of my characters have fur or scales or what have you. And I friggin' love this list, and I'll put it at the bottom in the description of this video because it's super helpful and it just is amazing. And doing your research like this is one of the best ways that you can fit these people up. Like, yeah, I did the research. I kind of know what I'm doing. And having a diverse cast of characters with great descriptions that aren't related to food is really helpful. None of my characters are chocolate, and I'm sure not creamy vanilla, you cannibal. Oh, and uh, one quick thing before I continue. Try not to have the native be savages. Please, just... Just try, okay? Lastly, just try your best. Just be the best writer that you can be and improve yourself as much as you can. Do your research and have a diverse cast of characters. If you have extraterrestrials come down, don't have them all coincidentally look like tall black human super beings. And if you have natives in your story, don't have them all be loincloth wearing savages who need the might of the white explorer to save them. Don't try and fix your LGBT character's sexuality. And if you're representing something like mental illness, drug abuse, poverty, addiction, or anything like that, please just do your research like you would on anything else. Make sure that you put the time in and that you do a good job. Honestly, it's that easy. Just try and write your story, I don't know, realistically. Don't kill off all your gay characters, because that's not realistic. I mean, not all gay people die. Well, I mean, we all die, but not just because a plot point happened. Don't segment and peg all of one group of people into one specific hole. Don't actively pervade all of the stereotypes as being true. Because are stereotypes true for some people? Yes, definitely. I like macaroni and cheese and peanut butter and jelly. But is it true for all people? Of course not, because we're diverse people. And that's just the point. That's what most people will try and get across to you. And that's what some people will be overly sensitive about and take too far. And your job is to accurately portray those in your story as realistically as you possibly can, given the setting. I mean, except for like those reptilian assassins, they're all blind thieves. Remember, you won't please everyone, and that shouldn't be your goal. You should not be trying to please both the rustic mountain people and the multi-gender Tumblr SJWs. That's not going to lead to anywhere but anger and frustration on your part, and you're gonna burn your story. Just try and write a diverse cast of characters that shows how amazing, wonderful, and cruel your world is. But would you like to visit a world where none of this is any concern? Because everybody is too busy running from shadow entities and malevolent gods? Well then Legendland, this fantastic piece of literature right here, is the book for you! Get it on Amazon, iTunes, Barnes & Noble, Smashwords, my publisher's website, and my website, www.arcgasstorm.com. And if you order it off of there, I'll personally sign in for you, without including the usual message you have to decode and you'll never be able to, it slowly drives you insane, I'll remove that for you. You're welcome, but I hope you found these tips helpful, that you don't get sucked into a flame war, and that you continue to enjoy it. Hi hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stalk me online at Facebook, Twitter, Goodreads, and YouTube, obviously. Please subscribe and comment below. Now if you're wanting the whole Legendland package, check out Legendland Tale of the Nameless God on Wattpad, updated every Friday. Watch some of my other videos, you might see something you enjoy, and I hope to see you next week.